All right, so obviously something's a little different since the last video. I don't know why, but the internet's kind of sensitive about these things, so let's just quickly address the elephant in the room. Period. All right, cool, glad we got that out of the way. Hey. So there's a common misconception in the manga anime community. There's these couple of words. It feels like people don't really know the meaning to. There's quite a few of them, but I'm mostly talking about shoujo and shonen. The misconception is that these words are the genres of different series. So for example, when people think shonen, they think it's going to be some kind of battle action manga. Or when it's shoujo, it's going to be some kind of romance. While they can be those things, that's not really what they mean. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this. Shoujo and shonen are demographics. So when a series is a shonen, that means that the target audience is going to be young boys or if it's a shoujo it's going to be young girls or if it's a seinen it's going to be young men or i think a jose is for women i think that's what it's called a jose i don't know any jose series my manga collection mostly consists of shonen and seinen series that's just the kind of stuff i'm into but and i've said this before my manga collecting journey has been all about trying new things so i went out of my comfort zone and i bought and read my very first shoujo series so let's go ahead and talk about orange Okay, so Orange is a series by Ichigo Takano, and like I mentioned, it's a shoujo series. How I found this series was my sister watched the anime for the series and recommended it to me. I also heard that it's a really good starting point for somebody who is new to shoujo, and after reading it, I can definitely agree with that. So I got the first two omnibus volumes. There's one and two. This is the complete story. There's another volume called Orange Future Diary, I believe it's called, and it's kind of like a spinoff or like a continuation. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Not because I didn't like this story, but because this story ended and I was very satisfied with the ending and I don't think I need any more of it. So yeah, while technically I don't have the complete orange collection, it says it right here. It says the complete collection. So yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So orange is about this high school girl and her name is Naho. And one day Naho receives a letter in the mail from her future self. Now in this letter is basically a day-to-day -day list of things that her future self regrets and how to go about changing those things. These things can range from one day somebody asked me if I wanted something and I said no I really wish I said yes to literally saving one of our friends lives and that's really the majority of the story it's a really interesting concept and I really enjoyed reading the story it's really good I don't want to go in too much detail because I don't want to spoil anything I'll have a section at the end of the video for spoilers but yeah I really enjoyed reading orange it was a very wholesome story it gives you a lot to think about I thought the characters were great there's one character in here um what's his name I think his name is Nagita. He was just kind of like the comic relief of the story, but sometimes he was hilarious. He really made me laugh. Yeah, I think Orange just all around just a really well done story. So the art is really good. It's amazing. My first impression of the art style was that, and I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. I felt kind of like shoujo series in just in general. There's like a, there's a very stereotypical shoujo style of art and i don't really know how to describe it it's just the style i think and i didn't really like it at first but it is just kind of one of those things that once you start reading you get used to it and you really grow to appreciate it that's what happened with orange i started reading it and now the art style is normal if anything it's great i did kind of think that all shoujo kind of had like a very similar art style before i read this so i guess the lesson to be learned here is don't stick to the age demographics. If you're a guy like me who's really only into seinen and shonen, I urge you to give shoujo a shot. Orange is my recommendation. I think it's a really good intro into shoujo series, and I'm totally down to read more. So if you've got like good shoujo series recommendations, leave them in the comments because I'm interested to see them. Fruits Basket is one that I've been hearing a lot of and I really want to get into. So that might be the next shoujo that I read. But yes, I am open to recommendations. Please let me know more. So while Orange was a great series and it was very wholesome, and it was very well done and I really liked it a lot. Just like any series, it was not perfect. So here's a new segment and I'm gonna call it Ryan ruins a perfectly good ending to a manga using logic and facts. Spoiler alert, AKA rap get him a laugh so. So yes, spoiler alert, you've been warned. I'm gonna be talking about the end of the series and there's a lot of big spoilers in here. So if you don't wanna ruin the manga, I urge you go read it for yourself if you haven't already. And then you can come back to this video and I can ruin it for you. Okay, so from this point on, I'm expecting you to have read the series. So basically in the manga, Naho receives this letter from herself and it goes day by day telling her all of her regrets and like what to do in those situations. And it makes sense because Naho keeps a diary. And so because of that, we know that the future self could have referred to that diary and that's how she remembered all the important things that she needed to take care of. However, we never see that any of the other characters have a diary. And then later in the manga, we find out that they all got letters from their future selves. How 
did their future selves remember everything? Was all of their memories just really good? Because obviously not who had her diary, but what did the others have? You get what I mean? I don't know. So that kind of confused me. I mean, most of the stuff I'm just thinking too much about. I mean, I don't think it took away from the story. But here's something to think about. So what if Kakeru grows up and becomes a serial killer? What do they do in that situation? Do they send letters back to their past selves and be like, yeah, so you know that Kakeru guy? Yeah, maybe just like avoid him or something. <laughs> That's awful. That's so awful. <laughs> like, what are they supposed to do? Why did I think of this? <laughs> Another thing I was thinking about is that once this group of friends saved Kakeru, in the future, they need to send letters to themselves again, because otherwise, they're just killing the Kakeru of the next timeline, you know what I mean? So if they want to truly save Kakeru, each timeline needs to send letters to their past selves. And now that Kakeru was saved, maybe Kakeru can even join in and send a letter to his past self. Maybe what the first timeline should have done is include instructions on how to send letters to their past selves. Which brings me to my next question, how do they send letters to their past selves? They didn't really explain that so they used the bermuda triangle so what they just put some letters on an airplane they said hey take this to the bermuda triangle what about the pilot of that airplane are there drones in the future that can just do that how do they send letters to their past selves that doesn't make any sense to me and i guess it's not supposed to make sense you know it's fiction whatever it's a fun story nonetheless but still i'm thinking like how how do they do it and i guess because we don't really know how this next point is kind of like invalid why didn't the future selves send the letters to an earlier date you know what I mean? It was so last minute, half the people didn't even see the letter in time, and the people that did just kind of didn't believe it. However, if they sent the letters to an earlier date, then they probably would have had time to like prove, hey, these letters are in fact legit and from the future. Because if they knew these letters were legit earlier and not on the day of, they might have been able to save Kakeru's mom and fix the whole freaking thing. So I really hope that that is something they consider the next time around when they're sending letters to their past selves again, because then Kakeru's mom might be able to survive and we can avoid this whole freaking mess. <laughs> Why does my brain do this? I'm thinking way too much into this stupid manga. It's not a stupid manga. It's really good. It's really good and I really enjoyed reading it. It's short. It's just these two omnibus volumes. Yeah, I blasted through them in like a day or two. Like I was I was hooked. I was I was into it. And that's that's kind of like the sign of a good manga. I was thinking about it for a while afterwards. Maybe I thought about it a little bit too much. <laughs> but yes, I definitely recommend Orange. And like I said before, I'm open to more shoujo recommendations. So let me know if you have any in the comments. And if you had read Orange, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Actually, besides my sister I actually haven't heard anybody talk about orange that's not true i heard manga new talk about it briefly in one of his videos but yeah it's a good series and i want to get you guys thoughts on it so let me know down in the comments if you haven't read orange i'll leave links in the description to where you could check it out and possibly buy it for yourself thank you so much for watching this video leave a like if you enjoyed and go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification button to be notified when i upload new videos but yeah i think that's it for me thank you so much for watching i'm ryan and bye